working in between projects, so I'm waiting on parts for that one. So I'm going to fix something on this one. There's two issues with this. It just comes with the age. Uh, I'm going to turn the, make sure the PTO is on. I'm not sure how good you're going to hear it. this uh, shaft in the beveled gearbox has side to side play. Let me see if I can't hold the camera steady. You see it right there? And when that's running and it leans downhill that direction it wants to bounce back and forth with uh, engine RPM. And one other problem is one of these check valves were bad not sure which one it was, but I had reversed them, so uh, at least the forward would work good, but when you go downhill with this, because that one's leaking, uh, it's one to get air and somewhat free will going downhill, So, and these valves are like 250 bucks new. So uh, rather than buy them new, I am going to swap them from this parts transmission. And uh, I also have the beveled gearbox I'm going to be sending out to an engine shop. Uh, input bearing is bad on this. So this shaft is actually going in and out that direction. But the gears are in good shape. And uh, the shaft doesn't seem too bad. The PTO isn't, end isn't worn too bad. How these work is for the in and out play on this shaft. I actually put shims on the seal and the seal hits the bearing. This one's rusty so it's not wanting to move but I took the shims off of this one over here. Oh, sorry. I'm going to use these shims to get rid of at least half of the play on this one. I might have more of these shims in my shed somewhere. I mean, I could probably go look. Uh, so I think we're going to move along with fixing this. going to have to take uh, all the clutch assembly apart and get this side plate off in order to get at the shims for that seal, which then takes up that side-to-side -side play. So I'm going to get started on that. i got to block it up so it doesn't move, and then I have to set the transmission down. Okay, I've never had this apart before, so I'm trying to fast forward for you guys because I don't want to make this video too long. So you got to get the wheel off to get access in here. This is the side that has the shims, the belt clutch side, the drive clutch. So we're going to have to take some screws out to get this off. Then you can take a nut off and this brake assembly off. There's two nuts. One nut back here for the park brake, one nut retains the other side of the brake band. You can take that assembly off, and then you can undo the bolts here, here, on that fan clutch assembly and get that off. There's one nut here that holds this brake assembly in place, that comes off. Then you can take your park brake off and out of your way, and then I can work on getting this drive clutch out of my way. So that is a uh, 5 eighths. I just noticed that this bolt and bushing uh, aren't working correctly. I'm going to have to take that bushing out and clean that. It's stuck. But yeah, that comes out of the way. You can unhook your brake rod from that as well. It's a half inch. And then we're uh, going to have to take this bracket off. Uh, actually, no, we can leave that bracket on. That's not going to screw us up. Uh, it looks like we're going to have to take this pulley off. And then we'll take the bolts out for the plate, and then the plate should come right off. So Let me uh, fool around on getting this pulley off. I'm hoping I can uh, just drill the two holes in this, put a puller on it, and it'll come off. But that's not always the case. So I'll turn you guys on once I get that off. Well, to my surprise, I took the nut and the washer off and undid the keyway and it actually came right off because uh, the gear oil comes out through here a little bit. Uh, 
the spacer in here actually seals up against this flat surface on the pulley and keeps it from leaking oil. So uh, when I go to put the new pulley on, I'll put some RTV right here and that'll seal up against the spacer and keep that from leaking. As you can see, it's a little wet down here from it leaking some oil. Key is okay. No problems there. Set that aside. I'm gonna leave this spacer in. I don't need to take that off because I don't want to damage the seal or get any dirt in there either. And then you'll see uh, here's where the pivot point is for the PTO pulleys, mule drive. So I can hopefully leave that alone. I don't think there's any cotter keys in that, so that should slide off. Same thing with the pivot point for the hydraulic controls. That should just slide right through over here. So that just leaves the retaining bolts for this plate we can take out. So there's three here, and then there's, I believe, three here. One is with the clutch. So I'm going to take these two bolts and those three bolts out and then slide it off. Okay, there was one more bolt back here in line with the fan that had to come out as well. So now it should slide on out. That's the theory anyway. There it goes. I'll get all the dirt out of here and start. I think I have an idea on why I have that side to side play. They never put the shims in here like it's supposed to have. So I'm gonna have to tap this seal in to tighten up this lash. And then uh, we'll see how far I have to, uh, or how many shims I have to put in there, and we'll go from there. Okay, I got everything uh, more or less pushed in here. I probably got 15 thousandths uh, tighter tolerance here than what I had before, pushing on the spacer and then the, the cone clutch. So it's not going back anywhere near as bad as it was. And this was flush, and now it's like 15 thousandths below the machine surface so I can now get this shim in there. The problem is the shim's going to fall out of place so I cleaned everything in here with some carb cleaner and I'm going to take some electrical tape and I'm going to tape that shim in place so we can put that side panel on without it popping out of place. That's the plan anyway. We'll see how well it works. A little tape on the bottom. I don't want it to really go into the seal though. I don't want to cover up the bolt hole either. So that looks like that'll work. Put this on the top. I didn't go over here. Yeah, just like that. There we go. Now this electrical tape is thin enough that it's not going to hurt anything when we go to put that panel on, but it's going to be enough to keep that seal in place. Where did I put that plate? There it is. I'll clean all the junk off of here, and then I'll turn you guys back on as we go to put it back. Slide it on there. See how it goes. Got the slide it behind the flange on the transmission. Lamp the hole on the swash plate, I guess you could call it. I'm over the shaft on the beveled gearbox. Got the PTO uh, pivot point in. Got the wire out of the way. That's now in place. I'm gonna start the bolts by hand. These are threaded in, the other ones are nuts and bolts, so I'm going to start these, the, the ones on this side first. And then I have some room for error on the back. Get these all started. I'm going to check to make sure our, that shim stayed in place. That tape is still holding, shim is still in. So I'm going to give you guys a little heads up, noise alert. And uh, 
There's gonna be two bolts up here in the front I'm gonna have to chain put in. And then one in the back. That clutch has to go in on this one. So I'm gonna make sure these are tight because I don't trust impacts. Because you don't want these rattling loose and cracking your casting. And then uh, once I get these all nice and tight and this all these bolts in, and we'll uh, put the pulley together. But I'm gonna have to clean the oil off of the, the pulley and the keyway and off of the shaft and just to make sure that everything goes together nice and tight and doesn't have any play in it. As loose as this keyway is on that shaft when I took it apart I'm wondering if maybe that nut holding that pulley on was coming loose and that was causing some of my in and out play. But uh, adding that shim definitely is going to help so instead of having that sixteenth of an inch in and out now it's only maybe ten thousandths in and out so it should be a lot better now so. yeah I found what I thought was probably my issue I'm sure I good you're gonna see this but you see the shiny spot it's actually uh, got a witness mark it's worn in quite a bit because this was loose and walking and then that bushing was going up against here and slipping causing that wear Another thing I noticed is, like I said earlier, this keyway is quite loose in this slot. So it's been walking quite a bit. So I got a, another keyway from that parts transmission I'm going to put in here. And I'm going to tap that into place so it's nice and tight now. Which it was not tight before. Try and get it square as best I can. And then I'm going to clean uh, the oil off of this pulley, inside this pulley, and on that shaft. And I'm going to put a little RTV on this spot where it goes up against that spacer to keep it from leaking any oil out of here. Okay, there's that RTV. Slide that on. Make sure that goes on all the way, then we'll put our washer on. We got our nut. You guys are gonna need another noise alert. Oh yeah. Way better than it was before. Keyway on that pulley that keeps that key from wobbling loose like the other one did. We'll tighten that up because it was not tight before. We should be done with that. Now, uh, one thing this tractor is missing, which I don't have an extra, I don't think, is the, the belt guard that goes here. That's going to go on the bottom bolt. I might have one, I don't know. I'm going to take a look at the parts transmission. I also want to get another belt. I want to replace the belt that's on here because this was actually off of that belt. It's all coming apart. So, got to change that while I'm in here. Okay, went back to that parts transmission and it had a nice belt on it. It's got some rust on it, but there's no cracks or polishing on it or anything like that or wear marks it had a good clutch pulley on it the bushing is not seized in the housing I swapped the pulleys out and it also had the correct spring for this so we'll be able to put all that on and get this thing all straightened out so we'll slide our belt in now and get it out of the way Set that up, out of the way. Gotta slide this in. I gotta put the nut and lock washer on there. Let me get that tightened up. Okay, I just wanted to show you how this brake hooked up. You can see there's a bracket here that hooks up to the rod, and then there's a jam nut here. And then there's two jam nuts here to adjust your brakes. This bolt's tight and not moving anymore. This was spinning because uh, 
the bushing was seized, so that's fixed now. You can see how I have this belt set off to the side. And I'm checking my pulley alignment. That all looks good. So everything from the transmission up to the beveled gearbox is nice and straight. So now I need to put the park brake in. We'll start putting the covers on and then hooking up spring tension and everything. Okay, I got my park rods set here. I just bolted this cover on. Checked my fan clearance in there with a flashlight. That all looks good. See the belt runs over top and underneath the bracket right here for that cover. And another thing I found on my parts transmission is the belt, uh, what do you call it, the belt guard that goes right here. And that's going to go into that bottom bolt. So I'm going to put that on. And then uh, we'll start sliding the brake assembly on. Sorry for the light, it's getting cold and it's getting dark. But anyway, I'm going to need to put the brake assembly on. You're going to notice that there's three holes on here. We'll see how the one brake rod connects there. We have to slide it on to this stud and that stud at the same time. And these are both a uh, machine crimp lock nut so they don't rattle loose. The, you don't tighten these down to the point where they don't move. They have to have some amount of play. They can't be super tight. Uh, this one, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the park brake and then tighten this one bigger one up. Because that one doesn't need to move, but this one needs to move. The one in the back. The smaller one. So that's going to slide on there. And that's going to go on to that. And I'm going to have to look around for another nut for that because uh, I seem to have misplaced it. I should have one of those on the parts transmission, which I've used a lot of parts off of that parts transmission. I paid a hundred bucks for it. If those check valves are any good, it's going to pay for itself. Uh, but I'm going to have to do those another day, so I'm going to get as far as I can as for getting this clutch assembly together. I'll do the valves another day. It's not too difficult to do this stuff, but I'm glad I went over it because if I had let that go, there could have been more damage over here over time. So I'm glad that's fixed. And also finding out that this bolt was, or that spacer was stuck, it's nice to find that before it caused any problems. So you got to check your tractors over every now and then. In case you are wondering where I got the parts transmission from, there was a guy that had 48 inch deck for sale on Facebook. And I went to go check it out and he also had a uh, spare transmission for similar tractors, a 7100. So I, I asked him how she was looking to get for that transmission and uh, he had the transmission for $100 and he also had the belt covers and the deflector guard for the 48 inch deck as well so I got all that in one shot so that's how I got that so yeah hundred dollars for that parts transmission so it's paying for itself okay it's another day uh, like I said I was gonna try tightening it up that still needs to be somewhat loose and this needs to be somewhat loose to allow some play allow that to pivot so I checked my Park brake adjustment, that's good, that doesn't go all the way back, and that stays tight. I'll loosen that up, and I can check my belt tension right here. I added this spring just to knock down some of the noise. It's a compression spring. So you'll see when I step on the pedal, that spring will collapse, and then uh, if I step on it more, it'll declutch. So that's just good. I put a second jam nut on this to keep that from rattling loose, so that's all good. Uh, check to make sure there's no in and out play. That's fixed. Now I just got to double check this small amount of rotational play. It's not much. I want to make sure the uh, set screw for the coupler in the tunnel is tight. So I'll go underneath and we'll check it out quick. 
Okay, this is the drive shaft underneath the tractor. You can see the six point set screw, locking screw. And uh, over here, I got my hand on the pulley right here. I'm gonna watch that keyway while I'm rocking this back and forth and make sure there's no play in that yoke. And that yoke is nice and tight. That keyway is not moving. And I am going to take a tool and tighten up that set screw there. Let me grab that quick. Oop, I dropped something. Oh, yeah, the pin. So I'm going to stick that in there and make sure that's tight. Can't do that with the camera in the way. Uh, but yeah, that is, it does seem to be tight. Get up in there. Sorry. Get everything in there in the one shot as I can. That is good and tight, not moving. Shaft isn't loose. While I'm under here, I'm gonna grease up this grease fitting right here for the steering. Probably shoot some lube up on the shaft on top. And before I put the wheel on, probably put the grease, uh, grease up the differential as well. Just checking everything under here before I uh, put any attachments on. Ugh. But yeah, this uh, little bit of play isn't going to hurt anything whatsoever. But, well, I'm going to continue on putting it together. And we'll just take it for a test run before we start doing the hydraulic check valves. Uh, anyway, here's one grease fitting right here. And then there's another one right there. So, and then I'll put the wheel and the weights on. So the bevel gear box is now fully serviced. Nothing's loose on it. And this little bit of walk I do have is probably just from the keyways wearing a little bit inside the gears. Not going to worry about that. I'll save that for another day. But that would just be going in through the plate here and replacing the, the wood drift keys. Might have to take the BBG beads off in order to do that. But anyway, uh, I want to figure out which one of these valves is the one that's leaking. So I have the wheels all chocked. I'm going to start the engine up and we'll see uh, which one of those is leaking. So let me start it up and warm it up and start going over it. Okay, there's two 3 8 12 point bolts. You just take one out and you loosen the other. That comes off. Then you need a one inch combination wrench. And you can loosen up that nut, that valve. Make sure you blow any dirt off of here so it doesn't get in. And uh, this is the one I have out of my parts transmission. Uh, would be a good idea to get new seals for it, but I don't have any on hand, so I'm just going to roll with it. I uh, sprayed everything with some oil and worked it back and forth and wiped it off with a rag and blew it off with a blowgun. Make sure there was no dirt in there. And I'm going to swap these out. So yeah, one in the back is for reverse, one in the front is for forward. Easy to remember. So I'm going to swap those out and I'll turn you guys back on and we'll test it again and see if it stops leaking. You know, look at the one I just took out. I'm noticing that this uh, 
seal here is actually just about flush with the body. So I'm wondering maybe that one seal was bad on there and that was might have been causing my leak. But I am going to put some, well, well the way to ch test these, which I'm not going to worry about, uh, would be to put some oil in the top, in that upper hole. Fill that up with oil and then see if it leaks out the bottom. Because if you look in the bottom, there's a little ball that goes up against the seat, spring loaded. So you can put oil in that top hole and let it sit and see if it leaks past it. Uh, like a thin oil or like sea foam or something. That's the way to test that. But this might have just been the seal was bad. But I'm not going to worry about checking that. We'll see if it's any better with the, the different valve and go from there. Shaft shims right there. I gotta put in the motor one of these days. I don't know if I'm gonna get that to this year. I'll probably do it another year. Let me hook up the tiller and we'll start test running it. Well, I got the tiller all hooked up. I'm down in the garden. You can see all the vines left over from the spaghetti squash last year. And surprisingly enough, that leaf mulch has actually turned into a pretty good quality dirt. Kept a lot of the weeds down even after the fact. So I'm gonna start tilling this under and then in my spare time start laying some more mulch down. So I'm gonna put you guys on the tripod while I uh, start doing some tilling. Been working at it. It's all nice and soft. I picked out any of the bigger rocks and the any kind of loose weeds that were on top. I'll have to till it again later, I'm sure, before I start planting. And I also want to put some mulch on top of it. This was all tilled last year, so it was already soft and good to go. And uh, didn't have any drama. I picked up uh, a little bit of junk, but not much. I'll show you. And uh, you might notice I was going back and forth. And the idea of going back and forth is to minimize these low spots. Whenever I stop and pick the tiller up, it leaves this low spot here. So I'll wind up having a, a high spot, low spot, and a high spot. So when I go back and forth, it minimizes this uh, low spot. And then uh, later on, I can just take a rake and rake this high spot into the low spot and then smooth it all out. Not a big deal. I do have to fix the fence later on, but while I have the tiller on, I'm going to go and uh, aerate the leaf pile. And I thought you might get a kick out of this. I have no idea where this came from, but I did pick this up out of the, the dirt. No idea what it's from. It was a surprise. <laughs> but yeah, I'll close this up and continue on.
Okay, now the leaf pile is all aerated. Uh, I'll bring uh, my craftsman down to the plow and push this back. But uh, the idea of loosening this up is so it's easier to work with and breaks up into smaller pieces. And uh, this is the one I'm going to use for mulch. And these are all the leaves from the vacuum unit, the track back that I dumped down here. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good day. And bye.